Alright, we're back with Butterfly Affection. Uh, we're going to have a quick recap here in this journal. When Agaha stung me, I lost all movement in my body. Her venom is strong and fast acting, but luckily temporary. It leaves no scar or noticeable after effects to my health. It also seemed to increase my sensitivity when she kissed me. Although the venom only affected me for a short time, what Agaha did to me remains clear in my mind when I see her. I can't decide where to go on from here. I'm organizing my thoughts and trying to see how I can move forward, but I don't know what I should do now. What is it that I really, truly want? Alright, and again for this uh, time around, we're going to make some more uh, responsible choices. Still stuck in my current state of worry, I stay in the bedroom. Aga comes back in and approaches me. And like before, she reaches out to me. I'm going to avoid Aga's hand. If she's using Venom, I just have to not let her touch me. Knowing this, I don't need to be subtle about it. I pull away from her, avoiding the tentacle reaching toward me. A bored expression crosses Aga's face, but she stops there. I stand up, away from her, and she unexpectedly leaves the room as if giving up. Eventually I hear some noise from the kitchen, so she's probably making food. I don't know where to go from here, but for now I'll log this in the notebook. I shut the door, open the locked drawer like always, and pull it out. As I'm figuring out how to get my thoughts on paper, I suddenly notice something amiss. Two lonely words written in red ink catch my eye. I didn't write these. The only one who could have is Akaha. I intended to use this notebook to document Akaha's growth. I've never shown it to her or left it where it could be seen. I even locked it up, and when I pulled it out, I always made sure everything was where I left it. I should have paid closer attention. If I were more careful about ensuring that Akaha wasn't in here, I would notice that she did something. But Akaha saw what she wanted to, and touched what she wanted to. It's not like she had anything to hide. From the time I found her to today, she acted in a relatively consistent manner. If the shelf was forced open or if the lock was broken, it would have made more sense. But this was so subtle. Aga must have opened it before without me knowing. But why just write this? If she could write, why had she, had, uh, why had she never done so before? Why? Why? Questions pop up in my head, one after another. And one in particular makes my heart skip a beat. Then, since when? The last time I opened the notebook was yesterday, and I've been home the whole time since then. In the limited time, Agaha would have had to search my room. Finding my notes and adding own writing while I'm not looking would be very difficult to do so neatly. The day she first saw my notes was probably long before writing in them. If she knew about the notes and where they were hidden already, then, when I was asleep or bathing, it would easily be possible. The message just running in my private notebook tells me is that I have been aware from it for a while. If so, then Agha should have known already, known just how much her behavior was affecting me. Panic takes over my mind. I look back down at those words. A clear answer to my questions is written in my language. I'm not just imagining it. Seeing these words, I feel a deep, overwhelming terror. I don't understand what Agha is doing to me. I could never understand her. She's tearing out my heart with her constant mischief, and I can't stay calm. So I'm going to leave the house and stay at a hotel. I need to get away from Agha as soon as I can. If I think about it calmly, I can rely on the police for this. I must find a way to be as safe from her. I can't live a decent life with her around. Time to go for a walk. I can't let Agaha get suspicious, so I don't pack anything for an overnight stay. I just put my wallet in my pocket and open the door. Agaha is standing right in front of the door like she was waiting for me. I try to keep a smile on my face, but the only emotion I feel now is fear. I act as natural as I can, not too cheerful or too serious. I want to cool my head for a bit, so I'm going for a walk, I say, as I pass Agaha by. She calmly stands out of the way. But as I pass Agaha to leave, I feel something touch my neck. And yet again, I feel a light pain. As everything starts going black, I see a different expression than usual on Agaha's face. A sad look. Or maybe shock. I woke up on my 
my bed. How long was I out? Looking at the clock, it seems only a short time has passed. Less than an hour. Even so, I feel refreshed. All that anxiety, terror, and stress I've been feeling. It's like it all floated away. Suddenly, the door opens and I see Agaha come in. As soon as I see her, the events of the past few hours flash through my mind. But why does it matter? I know that Agaha is dangerous, but I just be overthinking things. She's definitely at least intelligent as a human. So if she intended to kill or eat me, it would be obvious at this point. If she meant me harm, I would surely be dead now. Even though I acted the way I did earlier, Aka seems to have made food and has a bowl in hand. As soon as I saw Aka's face, all my worries and troubles flew away. Instead, I feel guilty for stifling the love of my heart. I'm still a little worried that I can't understand her, but the emotions Aka shows aren't very different from those of a person. The charming attraction I feel no longer scares me. I can't bring myself to reject her now. Why would I do that to Aka? She sits next to me and offers the food. I take it gratefully and whisper my words of love to her. Aga is silent as usual, but she responds with a beautiful smile. I spend a long time staring straight at Aga's face, seeing her expression, her love for me floods in. As I eat, I think about the words written in my notebook, and I consider the meaning of those words. From now on, I decide to do my best for Aga. Aga is still as mysterious as ever, but now I'm committed to her. If my love is what Agaha wants from me, then I will give her the love she wants. Huh. So, the result's pretty much the same. Just, you know, get roofied again and... Hmm. Okay, well there you have it, as we tried to be, uh, tried to make more responsible decisions, and uh, in the end, uh, we don't. So, that's it for this part. It's a short video.